Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now what we have here is NVIDIA's tiny RTX A2000. It's based on the same Ampere architecture as the RTX 30 series graphics cards and uses the same GA106 GPU found in the 3050 and 3060. I'd like to thank my friend Richard of Figo for sending this over to me to take a look at and I strongly recommend checking out his channel and his video on this card which will give you an insight on how this compares to the aforementioned 3060 and RX 6600. I'll leave a link in the description. The A2000 is a professional card intended for use in workstations but it can be bought and used for gaming purposes and what's more it can also make use of DLSS and ray tracing. Think of this as a cut down 3060 or a 3050 that existed before the real thing. This card can be had in both a 12 and 6 gigabyte variant. This one has 6 gigs of GDDR6 but aside from the lower amount of memory there are no other differences between the two. This one is probably a bit cheaper though if you can find it but like everything else it's most commonly in stock on second hand selling sites. What I really like about the A2000 is its small form factor and lack of external power requirements. This is a 70 watt card that could potentially be squeezed into almost any PC like we used to do with those 750s and 1050s back in the day. Now that the 3050 actually exists I thought it would be interesting to test the A2000 here and compare the results to Nvidia's latest mainstream RTX offering. After all if this is like a cut down 3060 on paper and the 3050 currently sits right below the 3060 in terms of the 30 series offerings my thinking is that they should perform quite similarly so initial impressions the A2000 is noisier the tiny fan is constantly spinning and quite audible and when it came to firing up my PC for the first time it wouldn't actually display an image. I had to hook it up to my 720p TV via mini DP to HDMI, install the drivers and then reconnect it to my 4K monitor. I thought it was broken first of all and my heart just sunk because not only did I think I'd broken something but I'd broken someone else's thing. Thankfully this wasn't the case and with the A2000 wearing away in my system it's time to play some games. I basically stuck to the same settings I used when I tested the 3050 last week in the hopes to achieve a close to 60fps average across the board. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p with the medium settings including crowds and textures the A2000 averaged 67 FPS with decent enough percentile figures. Throughout this video I'll have the comparative 3050 results on screen as well so that you can see how both cards did when tackling the same games. Things are pretty similar at 1080p. This continues as we move on to 1440p with the A2000 offering up some decent results once again. Low is the best way to play at this resolution and Cyberpunk is possibly the most intensive game that I tested today, so it's nice to see this workstation GPU holding up relatively well. There is of course the small or rather large matter of the price difference which we'll talk about a little later on. Because the A2000 can utilise DLSS we can keep the same native 1440p output but enable the quality mode to get a nice bump in frame rate. This is essential for driving around the more demanding areas of Night City and in all honesty there isn't much of a noticeable dip in the visuals. In Far Cry 6 the A2000 exceeded 60fps easily with the high preset. In fact it hit over 70 frames per second. Let's talk about that price now though. The 3050's MSRP is around £239 here in the UK and the A2000's is about four fifty, I think. It doesn't really matter anyway because realistically at the time of this video the A2000 is going for over 600 and the 3050 about 4 to 500 So if I was going to pay more than recommended retail price for a card I'd still buy the 3050 and this opinion would only be reinforced if by some miracle we do see prices fall back down to where they should be. At 1440p it's another good result for the little A2000. 60fps is doable with the medium preset almost and once again the percentile figures are pretty good with no nasty dips or drops. At this point I must admit that the tiny fan noise is starting to blend into the background as well especially with the game noise being louder. One game where the figures fell off a bit, at least in comparison to the 3050 at 1080p, was God of War. That's not to say the A2000 didn't still do a good job. 
It managed over 60 FPS at 1080p with the high preset, though outside of this boss fight that figure will hit and exceed 60, sometimes 70 frames per second. Not bad at all. 1440p with the original settings also fared quite well and I'd probably stick to these settings if I were to play through the entire game. The extra crispiness of the high resolution makes up for the slight reduction in visual quality. Of course we also have access to DLSS here which means that we can easily exceed 60 frames per second simply by changing this preset to quality mode and again there's no visual reduction to the quality of the graphics, at least no significant reduction. Going back a few years now to GTA 5 and the A2000 did exceptionally well with the very high settings, just like the 3050 did but this was expected because the game is getting on in years and it's very well optimised for a wide range of hardware. It still does hold up quite well visually when things are turned right up. MSAA was disabled because it chews up the frames but we could have it enabled without too much of a worry I think. 1440p again offered quite a decent experience too. There isn't really much else to say here because we're still hitting over 100 FPS. This is probably why I couldn't review more high-end hardware on a regular basis. I'd get bored very quickly. If I had a 3090, I'd be like, yeah, max settings, very smooth. Next, max settings, runs fine, next. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Before we talk about ray tracing, let's finalise these results with Battlefield 2042, which can also utilise DLSS. First of all, though, the native results. 1080p high will offer a 67, sorry, 76 FPS average. Uh, this average was taken after combining the results of three maps, the same ones tested with the 3050. But again, the footage is from a bot match for convenience sake. Again, it's a decent effort from the A2000. 1440p will mean that we have to drop down to the medium preset and even then the average actually came in at a little lower than 60 but not by much and again the game will still exceed this a lot of the time. DLSS will certainly help too with the game receiving a nice bump in performance with quality mode once again enabled. This is probably the way I'd play in all honesty at 1440p with DLSS enabled and the medium preset. So let's finally talk about ray tracing. I don't think it's worth enabling with a native resolution because it will cripple the frame rate, but thanks once again to DLSS, we can turn RT up to four in Fortnite, enable the balanced DLSS mode and get close to 60 frames per second, possibly even exceed it with a slightly more uh, reduced visual configuration. There was quite a bit of stutter here though, more so than with the 3050, but RT is probably best left off in my opinion across all the games that you decide to play. Still, it can be enabled should you want to, but it is best used in combination with DLSS. Now overall, the RTX A2000 is a pretty interesting card. It runs off motherboard power alone, will fit in a huge range of systems, and it offers 3050-like performance in a lot of titles but it's impossible to find from retailers and it costs more than both the 3050 and the 3060, at least here in the UK, based on current eBay prices, because let's face it, this is where most of the graphics cards are ending up right now. If you can find one for less than 3050 money where you live and are happy with the performance you've seen today, it might be worth it, but it's probably best left as a consideration for when the cost of hardware comes down. And it might also be worth keeping an eye out for the 12 gig version as well, which could potentially perform a little bit better in those games that need a bit more memory to work with. Thank you very much for watching then. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of this card in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.